Hi, welcome to Trailers from Hell. I'm Larry Karaszewski. Uh, right now we're going to take a look at a movie that I think is actually one of the greatest films of the early 1970s, but it kind of doesn't get talked about enough these days. It's from director Arthur Penn, who is coming off of a big role. He directed The Miracle Worker. He uh, made Bonnie and Clyde, which basically changed the movie business. And he was nominated for an Oscar for his work on Alice's Restaurant. This was his attempt to make a big epic about America. It's his hippie western. It's Little Big Man. 111 years ago, when I was 10 years old. Between 1858 and 1878, Jack Crabb was an Indian warrior, a preacher's ward, a gunfighter, a drunkard, a hermit, and he tried to kill General Custer. Take him away and hang him. And you can believe as much of that as you want. This really was one of the most ambitious films of the new Hollywood movie. It is not well remembered today because it wasn't released by a major studio, but rather a new startup company called Cinema Center Films, and released through National General Pictures. It was quite successful at the time, but now 50 years later, none of those companies are in business. And so none of the films made there are treated with any respect as crown jewels in a catalog. They are just dumped. A similar fate happened to 1972's The Heartbreak Kid, made by Palomar Pictures. Knock the major studios if you want, but one of the huge benefits of making a film for a big studio is that your movies are almost always out there. There's never a question of who owns what. I think this film is director Arthur Penn's masterpiece, a picaresque, candide-like tale in which Dustin Hoffman plays a half-white, half-Indian from a child until he is over 100 years old. He's the last survivor from the Battle of Little Bighorn, otherwise known as Custer's Last Stand. And he wants to set the record straight from all the bullshit that's been said in the past. But you have to wonder just how trustworthy this narrator is. He is so willing to switch sides from the Indian to the white whenever there's any advantage to be had. Usually, it's just pure survival instinct. I recently watched a documentary about the making of Little Big Man, and Arthur Penn talked about how he saw this as both a personal film and a historical epic. He kind of thought that all of Hollywood's previous portraits of the Old West were huge lies, but that this film would be different because it would at least admit it was a lie. It's a tall tale. And as Napoleon said, history is the rumor we choose to believe. And Penn clearly sides with the Indian cause. This is one of the first Hollywood films to reject the whole John Ford, John Wayne West. Penn thought that in the course of destroying the American Indian, a false mythology somehow emerged, creating heroes out of killers and buffoons like General Custer. This movie wants to tear those myths down, plus make parallels to the 1970 situation in Vietnam. There's a lot on this plate. And, this is important, this film is a comedy. It's both very funny and very serious. Penn is so great at mixing tones. The ambition here is huge. He does for the Western what he did for the gangster film in Bonnie and Clyde. You have to credit all the collaborators here, starting with Thomas Berger's great 1964 novel brought to life by screenwriter Calder Willingham. The editor is Dee Dee Allen. The production design is by Dean Tavaloris. This is the A-team of 1970s filmmaking. Dustin Hoffman masterly handles a difficult lead role which requires instant switches from comedy to tragedy, Indian to white, likable to repellent, young to old, naive to wise. It's a draw-dropping performance. Richard Mulligan is terrific as the pompous General Custer, but stealing the whole show is Chief Dan George, who brings such humanity to the role of old Lodgkins. He gets a well-deserved Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor, and wins the award from both the New York Film Critics and the National Society of Film Critics. He really holds the screen. In 2014, Little Big Man was added to the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress for movies that are culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant. I say this film checks all those boxes. Welcome to your new home.